Winning Cures Everything. <clears throat> now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. Winning Cures Everything NFL Week 17 previews. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And we have got a lot of playoff seating and whatnot to discuss this week. Good gracious. Uh, it is Christmas Eve Eve, baby. That's right. We're recording a day early. We haven't seen Green Bay and the Vikings play yet, uh, but that's okay. We are, we're we're not too worried about it because both of those teams are in the playoffs. There, There is no need to worry about anything else other than for them, it'll be seeding. And, uh, you know, if the Vikings get this win, they still got to win one more. Um do the Vikings still need the Packers to lose again? Yeah, the Vikings can't win uh, the division unless the Packers lose and they win. So they have to beat the Packers tonight. They have to beat the Bears next week, and then they need the Packers to lose to the Lions. I don't think there's a person on earth that really believes that can happen. So I think the Packers have the division locked up. I forgot last time we were recording uh, and we were talking about <clears throat> the NFL that – the Viking. I thought the Vikings and the Packers were virtually dead even. Neither one of them have lost a divisional game except the Vikings lost the first time to the Packers. Wrong. The Vikings have a divisional loss to the Bears also. Yeah, that kind of changes things and up. And the Packers bit. have swept the division. So even if the Packers lose tonight, that'll give them one divisional loss and split with the Vikings head-to-head. Vikings will have two divisional losses. Doesn't matter anything after that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's... Uh... It, it kind of sucks that we don't have, like, a, a winner-take-all, but I'm okay with it. It is what it is. So, the show, of course, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Uh, if you're looking at the screen, if you're watching on YouTube or wherever else, uh, you can see that nice big Tunica sign over there next to Chris. Of course, right. tunicatravel.com is the website. they got some incredible sports books down there, but they also got good concerts, good stand-up comedy coming through. Uh, they got good steakhouses, good golf courses, etc. You can find more information on all of that, along with those sports books, at tunicatravel.com. Uh, you can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. All of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Uh, we're on YouTube, of course. If you are listening on the podcast, uh, make sure you go subscribe on YouTube. Leave a comment. Click that like button on whatever video you're watching, and go from there. If you're listening on the podcast, uh, especially Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave a review. We appreciate those. We did have uh, somebody leave a review, and uh, and it was really, really cool. I'm going to go on and pull that up really quick uh, because it, it sounded awesome. It made us sound good, and that's always a good thing. So That means a lot. Yeah, um, but yeah, leave a nice five-star review. Those things, uh, it, it helps out a bunch. So if you subscribe and leave a review, uh, obviously it helps us out because it helps out that Apple algorithm uh, for whatever reason. I don't know how the algorithm works, but I know that those things help. Uh, let's see. Somebody said, best show out. Uh, said, Chris and Gary are great at what they do. Their views on games and picks are always taken into account. Love listening every week. Reached out to them recently, and they answered quickly and were super friendly. Seemed like very down-to-earth guys, and they always deliver solid content. You got to go. That. So I appreciate that. We uh, we do have a lot of people that reach out to us on Twitter and on Facebook. Yeah. Um, and we will respond as quickly as we have time to do so. So uh, you can always do that, or you can always leave comments in uh, in the YouTube chat, et cetera, et cetera. So make sure you join. I don't get in to there. the comments in the YouTube chat very often. Well, there's just so many of them to get to. It's, it's that's just, it. But if you DM us, we get we get back really quick. Or you can email us. Yep, winning cures Chris everything at, at WC or winning cures everything dot com. Yeah. sorry, Gary at winning cures everything dot com. You got it. So if you email us, of course we will uh, we will be sure and get back to you as well. Uh, we are also brought to you by Smack Apparel. SmackApparel.com. Use promo code WIN, W-I-N. You'll get 20% off your order no matter how big it is. They got great shirts, great gear, college and pro teams. Uh, they got a bunch of rivalry stuff like for Alabama, you know, I hate Auburn. Uh, for LSU, screw Bama, all that kind of stuff, you know. Go check it out. Your favorite team will be on there. Uh, I guarantee you're going to find something that you like. And if your order is over $40, they're going to ship it to you for free. So go check it out, smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN, W-I-N, and you'll get 20% off of your order. Chris, let's go ahead and fire into this. Game number one, I think the the most important game of the weekend is the Titans minus six at the Texans. It's 3.25 p.m. on CBS at Energy Stadium. If the Titans win, they are in the playoffs. 
Now, this isn't for the division or anything like that because the, the Texans already got that wrapped up. But this is one of those where if if this team wins, they get into the playoffs. Yeah, I, I we're going to disagree on where this ranks in the hierarchy because this game means nothing to Houston other than we keep the little brother out of the playoffs, and that's the only reason why. The biggest game of the weekend is the 49ers Seahawks game. Okay, and that's because I've got the that winner of that game wins the division, and the loser goes on the road to play in the playoff. That's that's, that's true. That is far more important to both teams. But let's start here. This is this is a big game for Tennessee. Yes, for us and our Tennessee crowd, and we, we have lots of Tennessee people around us. We like the Titans being the the the, the Memphis guys. So the Titans are six point favorites here. Are you surprised yeah. by that? <clears throat> like I, no, I, no, no, no. So week seventeen lines are always ridiculous. Uh, just just for the simple fact that Vegas is trying to play the guessing game of who's who's on first, um, who's playing where, who's doing what, and I think with the offensive line not being good, and with Watson being a little banged up, receiving core being a little banged up in Houston, they're not going to get a bye. This is an opportunity for this to be their bye week. Sit everybody, let Tennessee win, and good luck to them in Kansas City, and you get healthy and get ready for the Bills because I'm telling you, Buffalo's going to be no stinking joke. And if they're banged up at all, Buffalo's coming down to Houston and they're going to whoop that butt. Yeah, yeah, I think you're probably right. Uh, I think Vegas sees this as one team is going to try with everything they have and the other team – is going to roll out some dudes and and anybody who's valuable and maybe a little banged up, they're not playing more than a half. Do you think, so the Titans, I, I thought it was smart of them to not play Derrick Henry against the Saints Yesterday. the other day. Um, I wish I'd have known that before my fantasy final. I was in, <laughs> I was in a championship game, had a chance to uh, start, uh, oh, golly. Mine just went completely blank. Miles Sanders? Back up, no. Backup running back. Deion Lewis? Yes, that's it. I'm so sorry. That's God, it. wow. I went completely <laughs> out of out of mode there. Um, I had a chance to start Deion Lewis. Hadn't started him in forever. Just left him on the bench all year. Worthless. And, uh, yeah, it would have helped. Yeah, I could imagine that. I could would imagine help. that. So, I, as far as my fantasy goes, uh, I, I had a stellar week. Scored over 170 points in both of my leagues. Um, but that doesn't matter this week because I lost last week in both the round, or in both leagues. So this was the third place. Uh, oh, doesn't matter. You know, which didn't matter. It it does it does matter for like payout and whatnot. So I, I got third. I, I made some money, but uh, but it wasn't as much as it could have been. So this go. this week I would have won the championship in both leagues. <laughs> Henry Henry's healthy though, right? Like he was a healthy scratch, he, a little well, banged up, but. Yeah, not little, hurt. He little, could have played if he needed it, right? He he will be playing this week, from what I understand. But I get that. That's not what I asked. I know he's gonna play. Was he healthy enough to play last week and just didn't, yes. or was he hurt to a point where he would have had to miss, even if they would have had to win the next two games to get in? I believe that he could have played last week, from from everything that I have read. Um, but let me, I'm going to pull up Don Best and tell you exactly what it says. Uh, okay. They, so from what I understand, he could have played, but, uh, but they were erring on the side of caution. No need yeah, to get no. him hurt in this game because it get doesn't it. matter. Doesn't matter. No, I'm, I'm 100% behind that and I'm supportive of that. I just didn't know, is he actually hurt? And yes, he's going to play this game. It matters, but is he going to be, 85%, 62%. I mean, what are we going to get from him? Let's see. Um, all right, so he is dealing with a hamstring injury. Oh. Um, so, and it's... Those things last about three weeks. Yeah, just but Just long enough to, to be healthy when the playoffs are over. But I think that this is like, this is one of those nagging injuries. Yeah. No, that's that's what that's what soft tissue injuries do. Yep. And so, I, I am curious about, because Adam Humphreys is dealing with the hamstring uh, knew Humphreys Jackson, was. I knew he was out. Adoree Jackson dealing with a foot injury. Uh, Darren Bates has got a uh, – he's still dealing with a shoulder issue. 
Deion Lewis, uh, of course, dealing with an ankle. You know, it, these are all guys that, you know, you, you need. Uh, and I would imagine they will all be playing this week. Uh, no doubt. I don't think any of them are, are dealing with anything that is too drastic, like too severe. <clears throat> this is a this is going to be an interesting year where we thought the AFC was the downside and the NFC was super top heavy. I'm going to tell you, man, I these two wild card teams. If Tennessee can be healthy getting into the playoffs, and Bills just the way they are, man, that, these are two wild card teams that aren't afraid to go into any of these places that are going to play at home or the buy teams and take W's. Yeah. I mean, the Titans won at Kansas City just a couple of years ago. Yeah. So with the, oh yeah, and I mean, they beat them this year already. Yeah, they beat them this year already. So it, it's it's not out of the realm of possibility. Uh, and the bill, like the Bills, can beat anybody at at any. Yes, play. the Bills have matter. two losses to to the Patriots and one to the Ravens. Man, that that's a hell of a resume. And then one weird one to the Browns. I, the Browns have yeah. two two Ws that nobody can explain after watching this year. They are the team that. That just doesn't make any sense. No, you're right about that. They got drunk early, and and we don't know what happened to them the rest of the season. We uh, we both taking the Titans here. Oh, yeah. Minus the six. Minus the points. Yeah, I think, uh, obviously, they want it more. We're going to go with them. Let's uh, let's go ahead and move on to the 49ers minus three at the Seahawks. Winner of this wins the division. Uh, The Seahawks, with that loss last week, they don't necessarily wrap up, uh, you know, the number one seed. But the 49ers can. Uh, 49ers lost to the Seahawks earlier at home. At, how, how do you feel here? This is the Sunday night game. This is CenturyLink Field in Seattle. Seattle got blasted by Arizona last week. Do you think that that was a case of, all right, let's rest up, make sure our guys are good, you know, heading into this 49ers game? No, I don't think they were resting up. I think guys are legitimately hurt. Carson's not going to play in this game. Penny's not going to play in this game. Um they are talking about signing Marshawn Lynch to their playoffs roster. <laughs> they are they are so banged up right now. Did we lose you? I think we might have lost Chris. All right, let's hold on. Let's see what happens. Lost me. I'm here. Nothing okay. has changed in my life. No, no, no. It just completely froze. So, but oh. I think we're good now. <laughs> okay, so yeah, they're they're talking about signing Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, so, so they're talking about signing Marshawn Lynch. I just named off a bunch of people that are hurt for Seattle. Yeah. No, they're banged up. They're not healthy. And they haven't played great the last couple of weeks. Even when they're getting wins, they're kind of like the cardiac kids. Yeah. They got blasted last week by a backup quarterback. Brett Hundley, are we are we doing this? No, the I think the 49ers go up to Seattle. I think they kick their butt. I mean, I think I think this is going to be a, a, a butt whipping of, of biblical proportion. I, hey, you get the you get the comeback of you beat us, you broke our streak, they were undefeated, and 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 you took us down. This is for the division. We need this. It's for, I mean for them, it's the number one seed in the playoffs. Like That's right. you get to host every game in the playoffs if you win this game. That's right. I, I think the 49ers, I mean, they, look, they've got a bye week coming next week if they get this one. So it ain't no need to to chill on this one. Hey, go out and get this thing done. I like uh, I like where you're coming from on this. 49ers minus three is where I'm going as well. Uh, let's move into game number three. So we'll, we'll kind of start rolling through these fairly quickly. Uh, the, the Steelers at the Ravens. The Ravens are a one-and-a-half point favorite. They've already wrapped up home field. They've already wrapped up that number one seed. Um, no real reason to, to really show up for this game other than you get a chance to keep the Steelers out of the playoffs. If for whatever reason the Titans lose to the Texans, there's uh, so much more to it than that, though, yeah. Gary. I mean, there's no. Every year we do this. Every year, one of these top two teams have locked up the bye week. We all say, well, they don't have to play on week 17, so they're not going to show up. No, just bullshit. You can't in the NFL. You can't take two weeks off back to back. You just, you just cannot. They're going to show up, and they're going to play everybody all 60 minutes, and they're going to fight like hell. I think they would have done it if it was the Lions. I think they'd done it if it was anybody, simply because in the NFL, you take two weeks off that third week. There's a reason the Super Bowl the last couple of years has been not nearly as good as the championship games because they get that 
extra week. week extra. I'm telling you, man, these guys are used to a routine. Now, teams want to get healthy. They want the bye week. They like the one week. Nobody on earth wants two. I'm just – these coaches don't want two weeks off. The, the players, unless they're – dealing with a soft injury, but you're talking a few players on a 56 man roster that no, you you're, they're going to play all these teams that have the buy locked up. They're still playing all the teams that don't have the buy locked up. They're still going to play. We have a lot of games that actually matter week 17 than, than we normally do. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, you figure, I mean, Lamar Jackson is going to play, right? He's going to – everybody's playing. Okay. Now, if they get up big, they might pull him, you know, third quarter, second half, something like that. But they're going to play. It surprised me that this line was only one and a half. Vegas, Vegas is betting that they don't play. I just I just think they're wrong. I think – and I could be wrong on that. I think statistically – and maybe it's – I'm a Pats fan, and Bill plays everybody no matter if they've got everything locked up or not. We play football. That's what we do for a living. I'm paying you to play 17, 16 games. You're playing 16 damn games. Yeah. Um, but, but I don't – I don't know that coaches want to rest players when they have the bye week locked up. Uh, you might be right about that. I might be wrong on that, by the way. Statistics might tell me that Vegas knows more of this than I do, and they might say, no, they've got it locked up. Two weeks of rest is better than one week of rest. Man, if I was a coach, I don't want these guys sitting on the couch for two weeks. Working out in the gym is just not the same as live competition. Well, especially with the Ravens, who, who I mean, if you got a bunch of veterans, okay. Um, but, I mean, the Ravens have got a bunch of young guys. Now, Mark Ingram's not playing. He is He is No, but I think, I think that'll be Flat fun. Flat out, he's hurt, but he wouldn't play if this game meant the Super Bowl or not. I don't think he's healthy enough to play. He's injured. But I think everybody else is going to play. Yeah. I think I think you're right. And I think the Ravens running game is not going to take a step back just because no. Mark Ingram isn't there. Like no. it, it, and that Ravens defense is really good too. Yeah. And and this Steelers offense, Duck Duck had a couple of good games yeah. where everybody got to watch him. Congratulations. He's he's just a dude, man. And 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 he's he's just, he's just a dude to guys like you and I. In yeah. the league, he's a nobody. Yeah, it's it's bad and it on top of that, like I was really surprised that they did not at some point go to Paxton Lynch, right? Because that's how bad the situation has gotten there. Mason Rudolph getting hurt. You go back to, to Duck Hodges. I like, think Mason Rudolph's fine, by the way. Well, I mean, we'll see. Like he's he's listed on the uh on the injury report. Well, yeah, I'd um, list him too, because he's not gonna be on the roster next year. No, I don't think he will. And I, I don't know the Duck will either. Um yeah, I mean, you, yeah, of course, you got to have some guys in there, but like you got to have somebody as a backup. You, but you've got Paxton Lynch, as, and I don't think that he made the game roster last week. I I would almost guarantee he makes it this week. Um, yeah, I do too. Because I, you just you have to have you have to have a quarterback. You know? Yes. Um, and I think they only carried two last week, so it, you know, we'll we'll see. But uh, but yeah, I think it, you know when when you're down to the depths of having to roll with Paxton Lynch. You're probably in trouble. Uh, their defense is is great, but man, it, it's just it's tough when you cannot score. Like you can't win if you can't score points. Yeah, and they're going up against the best field goal kicker in all of football, and right now the best offense in all of football. I I just don't think the Ravens are going to have any problems. I I could be wrong if they go out there and they rest everybody. I'll just be wrong. I'll be big wrong. I think they could still win even if they're playing RG3. I know? think they can. It, 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 I think it would be a lot closer. If everybody plays, I don't. I just don't think it's close, man. The talent differential between the dudes on offense from one side of the ball and the dudes on the other side, and I think these defenses are pretty comparable. Um, I, I just – that we're, we can't even measure these things. No, I think, I think you're right about that. I think you're right. All right, let's move on to the next one that I've got listed here. The Redskins at the Cowboys. The Cowboys are 10-and-a-half-point favorites. Uh, and the Redskins have not been bad here lately. Like, I just, I, after watching the Cowboys, like, let, let's talk for a second about this Cowboys-Eagles game uh, because, obviously, we don't do a, a lot of NFL recap anymore, um, which next year, hopefully, we will change that next year because we, yeah, we just got to find gotta a, we got We got to find a better way to do it. It's, it's just so spread out between Thursday and Monday 
Uh, th- we would we... like to do the recap after Monday Night Football so we have the entire week, but it's that's, hard. Yeah, at that point, it's almost impossible to uh, to keep anybody interested because most everybody wants to talk about everything on you know that happened Sunday on Monday and then talk about Monday Night Football on Tuesday. It, it's just strange for the way that we've got our show set up. But either way, we'll fix it next uh, next year. Um, but this this Cowboys team, I I was watching that game. And at no point were they down, like, they were never getting blown out in that game. And they ran the football a total of 16 times with an injured Dak Prescott. Like, you, could, it was so obvious that Dak was having trouble throwing the football. He was not accurate at all. At all. Kept, kept missing just open guys. Missed he, Amari he over Gallup was wide open at least five or six throws well, same wide open. Cooper. And that dude is a – yeah, but Gallup is a physical force at Amari. Amari is an athlete. He's a free, he's a great receiver. Gallup, Gallup just towers over. He's one of those guys that you can't miss him being wide open. He's yeah. bigger than everybody else out there. Yeah. And and he overshot him all day long. And I just thought, and this that's, is no that's, chance. That's what drove me nuts is I'm watching the game, and, and you can see, like, it, the Eagles, fantastic – perimeter running defense like they can they're you're not gonna be able to get to the edge on them but there were spots for you to be able to get in between the tackles and and you've got Zeke Elliott who you're paying 20 some odd million dollars a year I mean you're Jerry Jones you still haven't paid Dak you still hadn't paid Amari Cooper but you went ahead and, and rewarded Zeke for sitting out training camp use him like what, what are we doing the, the the problem is 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 you you this is what they are with Zeke. I mean, if they if they didn't have Zeke this season, I mean, this might be a six win team. This might be a five win team, maybe. Yeah, I mean, that's... because of the way their offense is set up, if they were one dimensional in the passing game, I'm, I Tony Paul and all the Memphis fans are going, oh, they got Tony. That wouldn't be that big. No, no, it ain't you. the same. He's not the same as Zeke. He's just not physically imposing, and he doesn't have that breakaway speed that Zeke does. He doesn't have the power or the speed. He's got power and he's got speed. He doesn't have that next level. And if you didn't have to worry about that and you could just man up with your best guy, Cooper or Gallup, and double team the other two with a with a with a single high safety, I, I'm just telling you. This team doesn't win any games. I yeah. mean, it's, it's tough. They're obviously going to get some, but I think, I mean, I think five, six is the ceiling. Yeah, they, you you were probably right about that. So that $27 million is probably well spent because not only is that the ceiling, but that's also like you're, they're bad to watch. Like you're not yeah. c- close. Some of these games, at least you're close. You're in them. They're interesting. They're, I mean, these are rocket chair games. Well, I mean, on top of that, like, so with this Eagles game, I mean, you obviously this was not just a one play game, but you get down to that fourth and eight, and you don't have Zeke out there, and you don't have Amari Cooper out there. But we got Tavon Austin, who would be like the fourth best receiver on the Patriots that have no receivers. Yeah. I, none of it made sense to me. Obviously, there will be a coaching change. I don't know who they're going to go get. Uh, Urban Meyer or Lincoln Riley or and it's probably not going to be either one of those. Like it, it I, I don't know who would want to go. Like obviously, there's talent there. Um, yes, but but we don't know what that talent's going to look like because we don't know. We assume Dak's not leaving. What we assume is is one of Dak or Cooper are going to get franchise tagged, and then the other one's going to get signed. Yeah. I, I, that's what that's what I assume is going to happen. I don't think they give both of them the deals that they want. I think they sign one, they tag the other, um, they bring somebody in. Um, I want to talk about the Philly side of this and criticize Dallas's defense a little bit here. <clears throat> well, hold on, hold on. Let's uh, let's okay. let's finish up this Redskins talk because the Eagles game is the next one. So let's okay. talk about Philly on the on the next game. Sure. Um, Redskins have not been awful. Uh, Play yeah. hard, fighting hard. Yeah, they're they're fighting. They they just they they understand they ain't in the playoffs. It the the draft seating doesn't really matter for them. Nope. They just well, want it to did win. it did in this game. It did it did last week. By yeah, the way, but but not they're in locked this up number two now. If they win that game, they drop from two to five or six. But but now it doesn't matter. They're locked. They're uh, locked into two. So they they just want to get a win. 
And you got to wonder with the Cowboys, do they do they come out fired up or do they come out just okay? We're just ready to get the season over with. Uh, I'm going to side on they just like I think the Cowboys can still win. I think there is no chance that they win by ten and a half. Like I, I'm I'm taking the skins with the points. I'll I'll take the Cowboys to win. Um, but man, I just I, I don't know what the motivation is here. I'm trying to see. What time that game is in the yeah. it was three twenty five so on the Fox. league. Yeah, but I'm looking at both those games. The league did an awesome job this week of flexing the times of all these games to where every team that needs somebody to do something else, all those teams play at the same time. Yep. So you can't see what your opponent did. No one has an advantage or a disadvantage. If you're the Steelers and you need the time, you're playing at the same time. You're the Cowboys, you're the Skins. Y'all are playing, they're both playing at the same time slot because we don't want we don't want one team to think, oh, well, because if the Eagles win it, they're in. Well, they we don't want the Cowboys to game to start and them to know they're already knocked out of it. Yeah. That we want them because then ratings will plummet. Nobody will care. So so the the league did a really good job of manipulating the time slots of all these games. And I, I knew that for most of them. I wanted to verify it for that one. Um, <clears throat> the skins are playing hard. I mean, they're playing really tough. I don't, I wouldn't make them a double digit dog against, against anybody outside of maybe the top seven or eight teams. Yeah. And Dallas sure as hell isn't that. No, no. And even then I'd like it. I just I don't know the skins I understand are not not great, but I mean they have fought really hard against like some when, really good and teams. I, in case Keenum is gonna is gonna be quarter he's a capable competent quarterback that guy's gonna get picked up somewhere yeah I agree if Case Keenum was in Chicago this year they make the playoffs I think you're probably right about that like they like they're a playoff team and they're in contention for that division that's uh, we so I've got the Bears and the Vikings in my uh, in our rapid fire. Um, and we'll talk about the Bears here in here in That's just fine. a minute, but uh, but yeah. So so, which uh, which side are you leaning? You you going Redskins? I'm gonna take I'm gonna take all those points. I get ten and a half points. I get more than double digits. I'm 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 taking all of them. I don't trust this Cowboys team at all, man. Uh, do you uh you you still think Cowboys win, or you think the Skins can? <clears throat> no, I, I think I think they've got enough to win. I think they've got enough pride to win, and and that game, um. I'm just curious. I'm really curious about the crowd. Do Cowboys fans buy in one more time? Do they show up and say, we win this game and Philly loses. We got it. So we're going to the playoffs. Everything else be damned. This is my team and we're in the playoffs. So we don't care. Or is it like I listen to cousin Sal and Bill Simmons talk about their podcast from last night. And Sal is thinking, please don't make the playoffs because you're going to get smoked in round one. <laughs> and then if you happen to win round one, no one thinks you can make a real run. But yeah. if you win a playoff game, do you save your job? And are we doing this again next year? Yeah. I mean, that's a good, it's a good point. Like what are you as a fan? And I, and I kind of wish I was friends with more Cowboys fans. I mean, I don't, I say that very loosely, I don't. I don't need Cowboy fans, friends. I'm okay, but I would like to talk to some of them and have an intelligent conversation about how do you feel? What do you want? Because you don't want to lose to the Skins. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, do you just want to win and then hope Philly wins, and that way you don't have to worry about it? You're just out of your misery. I, I, yeah. I mean, that's that's probably the best way to go about it. Um, <laughs> I but I, I doubt. I doubt that the players feel like that. Oh, like, no, the players are all fighting. I mean, they're fighting yeah. for jobs because they know if a new regime comes in, I don't want to get cut. Yeah. I need I need this new regime to turn the tape on to see me playing good. Yep. Dak's trying to get paid still. Cooper's still trying to get paid. That's a, Cooper is the perfect example of of why you have to pay a quarterback over a wide receiver. Um, yep. Because he, for for Amari to get the ball, you got to have somebody that's capable of getting it to him. You know, and it's the problem is, is Dak hadn't been capable of getting it to him. Yeah, for so you're going to pay the guy now. that hasn't been capable of getting it to him. 
for a while. I don't want to hear the injuries this week. The injury was this week's problem. What was the last couple of weeks' problems? Because I think in the last three games, he's had one good one and two just complete stinkers. Yeah. It's, it's not, I don't think Dak was hurt for all of them. No. It, it's not been good. It has not been good. All right, let's move on. Eagles, Giants. Um, let's see. Let me write my time down here. Eagles minus four and a half at New York. This is 325 p.m. as well on Fox at MetLife Stadium. Um, I, look, Giants have been playing pretty good here lately. Daniel Jones actually looks pretty good. Um, I, I just, I feel like the Eagles last week, well, yesterday, uh, felt like that was the Super Bowl. But they got to go out and get one more, and they are so banged up. And I think the Giants are such a better offensive team right now than than the Cowboys. Like, I know that that's crazy to think about. But, I mean, maybe maybe I'm nuts here. Like you are. I, I, the Eagles' front seven is going to make Daniel Jones look like the fool that he is. You think so? Yes. He didn't play a front seven last week. The skins aren't pressuring anybody, and they've got no secondary whatsoever. Well, yeah, but, I mean, they – all right, so – so they did play at Fletcher the Eagles. Cox. Fletcher Cox is going to eat Daniel Jones for lunch. They lost twenty three to seventeen at the Eagles. They they put up forty one on the Redskins. They put up thirty six on the Dolphins. I understand, not great. Um, you know they lost thirty one to thirteen to the Packers. Lost nineteen to fourteen to the Bears. Uh, you know they they had lost a ton of games in a row. What is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games straight. They have come out and won two straight. And the offense appears to be clicking. Uh, Eagles might have put everything they had into last week. You know, I just... I, the, the this four isn't college, half, Gary. I, look. You use college logic, you're going to get beat in this game. I could be wrong, but you use college logic. One of these teams needs it, and the other team doesn't. One of these teams wins this game, and they make the playoffs. They win the division. And the other team, nothing happens. Nothing changes. They go from the fifth seed spot in the draft to, like, the sixth or seventh. Yeah, but we, I mean, we saw it last year with the, the Browns and the Ravens, right? I mean, it, the Ravens ended up getting the win, but the Browns, I mean, they played tough at the end of that game. And the, Browns, it, the Browns were a capable, competent offense the entire end of that year. I mean, the last six games of that year, they won like five or six. That's the true. Giants aren't that. Uh, you might be right. I, I'll go on and tell you this. I'm going to take the Giants plus the four and a half. I'll take I know the you Eagles. are. I'll take the Eagles to win. No. Um, but, I mean, the Giants at home. Last game, you know, I, we're gonna we're gonna look back on this career, okay? And at some point in time, somebody who's a football historian is gonna look back and they're gonna see the career that Fletcher Cox has had. And they're gonna say he's the most underrated player in in our lifetime of playing ball. You might be right. This guy, this guy has been so dominant for so long in just the model of consistency. Every he's never had a bad year. He's never had a down year. And there's been multiple years where he was in consideration for defensive player of the year. Never won it. Never been that top guy. But I just think that's because defensive line gets overlooked so much. And unless you're just, I, I, I just, I, sh- I swear, if if the Rams were still in St. Louis, nobody would care who who Aaron Donald is. All right, that's, that's just the point. truth. But because he's in L.A. and they needed a star, and he's the only good player they got, they're blowing him up. Okay, but Fletcher Cox is an absolute freak, and he's been doing it for a long, long time. This defensive front for the Eagles is still good. They still have like seven or eight pro bowlers on this team, all right? They're they're not a bad football team. What I couldn't figure out for Dallas last week is defensively, how in the hell are the only two people that can get open and catch a football, the two tight ends of Zach Ertz, and, and Dallas Goodard, and they're good. They're really good. But you don't have anybody that can cover those two guys. It's not like they have any other receivers that you need to be locking down. Yeah. I, I, yeah, you got a point. I don't I don't get that. And I'm going to tell you this. I don't think the Giants are going to be able to cover those two guys either. And Miles Sanders, Miles Sanders is not taking a back seat to Saquon Barkley. No, that's true. He's not. That kid is a stud. He is he is ready for this. He broke out last week against the Cowboys, and I thought the Cowboys had a pretty decent run defense. I, either I was wrong or Sanders is just a freak. And he is he has taken his rookie year, and now we're at the end of this season. He is coming to his own. Yeah, I mean, you got a valid point. 
So I, I think the Eagles win. I think the Eagles win pretty big. The the Giants had Eli Manning playing in the game uh, three weeks ago. Yep. Um, now, if you look at the stats, like at, I mean, the Eagles ran eighty five plays to only fifty two, had four hundred eighteen yards to only two fifty five. Um, but I mean, they they won twenty three to seventeen in overtime, and that was in yep. Philly. Uh, I get it. So, I I just I wonder, you know. I, I think the Giants can hang in this ball game. I think the Eagles win, but I, I like the uh, I like the Giants plus the four and a half here. I I just there's there's pride at stake here, um, so I'm I'm going to take the Giants with the points. But uh, but yeah, I do I I think the Eagles win the game. I think the Eagles win. Uh, let's go into the rapid fire really quick. There's only two games that I've got listed as interesting uh, outside of our our top whatever. Um, and yes, there are more games that that could be talked about. I guess. But I ain't worried about them. Uh, the We're Jags, not. the Jags, and the Colts. Colts are a three and a half point favorite at home. It's three twenty five p.m. as well on CBS. Um, it, it the Colts still have a shot of getting in the playoffs. You need the Steelers to lose. You need the Titans to lose. Um, you need the Raiders to lose. You need the Raiders to lose. Like uh, you, there's, it, Colts got a shot. You know, at, the Jags have been terrible, just terrible. Yes. Is there that any, whole that whole front office, that whole team is going to be turned over. Well, yeah. So Coughlin is already gone, uh, but Marone is going to be gone. Um, it, I mean, is Nick Foles going to be gone? I think so. I mean, it, where where does he even land? Like, I, I think they could a, sell Nick Foles. I think they could trade Nick Foles for a pick, and but they got to pay him. Yeah, that's probably it. it so if, that, so if Foles is owed twenty million dollars next year. If if you're the Bears, now the Bears don't have a first round pick, they traded away. But, uh, if, but it's, if, it's Foles worth a first round pick. But I'm just saying no. But let's say I mean, but I think you you get for you're, you're not going to trade your second round or your third rounder if you don't have a first. Like you can't can't trade everybody. But but if you're if you're a team that need and, and we use the Bears because they're the easiest point. They really are a quarterback away from being really good. Yeah. Like like they'll take a substantial jump. Most of these other teams. They need so much more than just a quarterback. It wouldn't be worth making the deal for, all right? But yeah. if but if you're a quarterback away and you could make the deal with Foles, you they you give let's say you give them a fourth round pick or a third round pick, but but they're gonna they're gonna pay fifteen million dollars of his twenty million dollars that he's owed. So you get him cheap. You get him for five million dollars. That's what you're paying a backup for. But you got to give up a pick. Or if you're a team that you need a solid backup, what if you're the Steelers next year and you don't know how healthy Ben's going to be and you know what happened this year? You can't do that. Yeah. So let's so let's let's see if they'll bite on a third or a fourth round pick, and 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 you can and you can dump him, but they're gonna pay they're gonna pay the bills. Yeah. I I mean, it's a, it's a good question. It's a really good question. Uh, Indianapolis still got a bunch of guys hurt. Vinatieri's out. Pierce Campbell's out. I I don't know that this game matters at all. But it, I, you know, this game just it's not going to be fun to watch. It's not going to be good. No. The the Colts need so many things to happen, which could all happen, and they get in. Um, and the Jags could come out and kick their butt just because, you know, the Mississippi Mustache goes off. Yeah, I mean we'll we'll see we'll see it. it it's all. It's all crazy. Like both of these teams have a bunch of dudes out. Um, it's it's just going to be, but you you won't be watching this one. There's so nope. many other games on at this nope. time. You're not going to be watching this one. Uh, the Bears and the Vikings. Vikings are a seven point favorite. Now we're recording this before the Monday Night Football game, so it may not matter to the Vikings. Sure. Um, I don't know that it necessarily matters to the Bears. Uh, I mean, in this situation, you kind of want to lose just to make sure that you have a better draft pick. But the, but the, the front office the, will, but the play. Oh, they don't have a draft pick, so no, they're going to try to win. Yeah, so that's they don't have they don't have this first round pick, and and the front the, the, all these players. Once again, these players are still looking for jobs. I mean, yeah. they've got free agents on this team. They've got guys that if they fire Nagy and move on from Trubisky, all these other guys got to justify why they're there to this new team, this new crew. We think Ryan Pace is going to be gone. Well, I I think Ryan Pace should be gone as the GM. And if they make that move, then everybody's on the shopping block because the new GM's going to come in and they're going to want the team to look like they want it to look. So you got to show them 
you're capable of playing. You're capable of fighting through anything. Yeah, yeah. I, you're, I mean, you're right. Um, at the Bears, for a, a short amount of time, you know, they beat the Giants, they beat the Lions, they beat the Cowboys. But after that, um, you know, I mean, they they lost two straight. They've lost to the Packers. They lost to the Chiefs. They, they don't have a good win on the whole season. No, I mean, if you want to count the Cowboys, sure. They beat the Lions twice. They beat the Vikings. Um, yeah, that. Well, I was sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was what week two, week three, week uh, week four, week four. It was. I knew it was early in the season. They they they. That's the one because that's I'd forgotten the Vikings had that loss, and that's a good that's a good win. I mean, yeah, give I mean, them they, that. They started out three and one. Yeah. So no, I thought they were. The, I thought they were still in the fight for the division. I thought they were gonna make the wild card. And so you you lose by three in London to the Raiders, you uh, you lose by one at home against the Chargers, um, you know you lose by eight to the Eagles, you lose by ten to the Rams, you know they I mean they're they're sitting at seven and eight, and you know yeah they're not making the playoffs, but I mean you get back to eight and eight, you know if if you win eight games with Mitch Trubisky at quarterback, like I I, I think that's all right. You know, you just at some point in time, somebody has to realize Mitch isn't the guy. You need that person to have enough influence in the team to be able to make sure you pull the trigger on moving on from him. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you are right. Uh, David Montgomery has not been um, quite what they thought he was going to be. I mean, at 700. Ah, but they're one dimensional. Yeah, very much so. Uh, I don't Alan, think that's a knock on David Montgomery at all. No, 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 not at all, not at all. Um, it, with the Vikings, like if the Vikings win tonight against Green Bay, then this game will mean everything to them. Now Dalvin Cook isn't playing tonight, um, but you know, and I don't know that that necessarily means he will win next week, but I, I or he will play next week. But I, I do think if the Vikings win tonight, I mean they are going to have guns a blazing at yes. home in this this Bears game. Yes. Otherwise. You know, it, this may be a spot you're not going to get the bye week anyway. Like maybe you sit out cousins, maybe you sit out all sorts of stuff. So it's a it's a little early to uh, to be making picks on this one. That's why I kind of tossed it in the uh, the section where we're not making picks. But um, you know, it's still a lot to figure out as to what the motivation will be for the Vikings in this game. Yep. All right. I think that uh, that's going to wrap it. Any other games that you think we need to hit? No, man, I think that's it. I'm like, like I said, we could have left one of those out. <laughs> yeah, we really could have. We really could. All right, of course, go over to Smack Apparel, smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN, W-I-N, to get 20% off of your order. And if your order's over 40 bucks, it's going to ship for free. They got a bunch of cool gear over there for your favorite pro and college teams. Smackapparel.com, promo code WIN, W-I-N. you get 20% off. Go over to tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi is the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. Tunicatravel.com has got all of the information for you. And make sure you go over to winningcureseverything.com. Uh, enter in the picks contest. Of course, we will always have interesting stuff over there. Uh, all of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, and social media platforms are there. Uh, I think that's it. So if nothing else, if you can't think of anything, that's going to wrap it up. <laughs> we'll see you all next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.